Good morning, I'm Louis Francois, co-founder and CTO of Towards the Eye, and today we will finally settle it between RAG and CAG. I've already made a standalone deep dive on RAG and another one on CAG, and a comparison of both. And I thought that was enough acronyms for a lifetime. Then, along with my friend at Neural Maze, we decided to do a guest post comparing the two. This time in a practical format, not just recommendations and theory, but an actual comparison. I said, sure, and with my team's help at Towards the Eye, we made this 3000 word piece and sent it to Miguel. And then I instantly wished the whole thing was a video, because it was so valuable and so cool. So here it is. Grab a coffee, mute your Slack or Discord, and let's talk about what really happens when Cache Augmented Generation, or CAG, and Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG, step into the same octagon. First, a one breath recap for anyone who wandered in from Cat Video YouTube. RAG turns every user question into some sort of scavenger hunt. Your query, or the question, becomes an embedding, the numbers, that embedding searches into a database and out pops the top passages and those passages get glued to the prompt before the LLM even thinks about answering. It's flexible, it's modular, it's super convenient to focus on the information the model actually needs. CAG flips the workflow around. You dump all your documents into the model once, capture every key and value tensor the transformer emits, that's the KV cache, and reuse those tensors forever. No more retrieval trip per query, no more hold on, I'm researching. It basically preprocesses all the information to have it ready to compute in its cache. The model is basically living in a perpetual open book exam. All right, that was one long breath. If this was too fast and you are unfamiliar with either CAG or RAG, take a few minutes to watch my videos covering them. Assuming you are still with me, there's a question that could pop up. Why didn't we do this years ago? Let me do one last quick interruption before we really get into this. Before we go further, if you want to make videos like these quite easily, you'll love today's sponsor, AI Video Cut. Editing podcast interviews into punchy reels used to eat an afternoon for my editor, and even more if I did it. Now, I can just drop the podcast link into AI Video Cut and let the usual AI magic happen. Their new in-browser editor lets you edit transcripts, trim video segments, and customize captions with just a few clicks. And it spits out vertical, horizontal, or square for all platforms from clips up to 50 minutes for free. Paste the URL, sip your coffee, and download Ready to Post Shorts. Click the link below to try it now and level up your content workflow. Now, let's get back to why we didn't do this years ago. Three blockers suddenly disappeared. Context windows ballooned to 128,000 tokens, or even millions as in Gemini. Frameworks like VLLM and Hugging Face started handing us low-level access to past key values, and tokens and GPU costs keep dropping. With those gates open, Miguel and I wanted hard numbers, not marketing slides, so we built two pipelines side by side. Here, we compare the same GPU, same knowledge base, 1,370 tokens about AI and machine learning, and the same model, Meta's Llama 3.1 8B. Small enough to run on a single 24GB card without setting the studio lights on fire. By the way, the notebook is available in the description of the video, along with Miguel's article, if you'd like to follow along and run your own comparisons. For CAG, we loaded the docs once, grabbed the KV cache, and from that moment on, every query consisted of only the fresh user tokens. So just the questions. For RAG, we did the usual four steps, embed, retrieve, assemble, and generate. Then we pointed both systems at seven questions, five safely inside the docs, so about AI and machine learning, and two deliberately way outside. And we logged everything, token counts, wall clock latency, GPU memory, and GPT 4.1 quality scores as a judge. This way, we could compare the results for both in-context queries and out-of-context queries to see if there was an impact, and I'm quite happy we did that. Now, are you ready for the reveal? Building the CAG cache front loads 1,370 tokens just once. 
After that, every question costs around 30 tokens, roughly 7 for the new question input and 23 for the answer. RAG skips the preload, but burns roughly 296 tokens per request because of the added chunks. So around 253 coming in as the input and 43 going out every single time. This is 10 times fewer tokens per query with CAG, post cache. If we do the math, after six queries, the CAG setup has already paid off for itself in token savings, and every request beyond that moves you further into the green. Plus, RAG adds inference latency by computing query embeddings, searching a vector database, and integrating retrieved documents for every request contributing up to 41% of total latency and increasing token-related costs. That's why we say that using CAG on a big report that you query a lot becomes quite interesting. But what about the generation quality? We asked GPT 4.1 to evaluate each answer. It gave CAG an average of 4.46 out of 5 and RAG an average of 2.86 but it did say it preferred RAG answers when it was right. So RAG seemed better when it was right, but was wrong way more often. Interestingly, CAG excelled at instruction following and crucially refused to hallucinate when asked what's the capital of France, because Paris wasn't in the cache. RAG, on the other hand, retrieved a vaguely relevant paragraph and proudly declared Paris. While the answer is good, we specifically asked to answer only if the response was in its context, which means that CAG seems to apply this concept better for out-of-context questions. CAG is constrained by its cache. RAG is not. So if it's really important to you that your users cannot ask anything to your model, CAG might become the winner. Just note that this is only one experiment. We would need a whole study on this behavior to confirm it. In a one-line recap, it seems like CAG excels at instruction following while RAG provides more comprehensive answers. But before you rip out your vector database in a celebratory frenzy to implement CAG in all cases, let's replay the comment that landed under our article, the brutally honest PSA we all need. First, we didn't experiment with many token amounts. We just used 1,300 tokens and that's it but the results would be different with 100,000 tokens or 200 tokens. Second, under six queries for the same context, RAG was more valuable. If you have way more tokens to cache, it will add many more queries until CAG beats RAG. Second, CAG is stuck with this cached context and cannot dynamically change parts of it as with RAG. It's much less interesting when you want to ask questions about various topics or data points. CAG is not set it and forget it. You need real transformer chops, cache management, GPU memory pinning, sometimes full sharded data parallel, maybe tensor parallel if the model's chunky. And caches are fragile. Change one sentence in your docs and the whole KV store is invalidated, meaning you pay that 1,370 token tax again, scaled up to whatever monster corpus you actually use in production. If your knowledge base is tiny, changes hourly, or your sessions are single-shot Q&A, CAG isn't viable. RAG's messiness, on the other hand, hides a superpower. It inhales terabytes. Need to swap in last night's logs or today's market data, index it at 2 a.m., go live at 9. Latency rises linearly with document count, yes. But the architecture never blows up because your PDF got edited. All you need is a powerful database that you can update and query easily. So here's the rule of thumb. If your knowledge is stable, your sessions are long, and you own the hardware to pre-warm a cache bigger than my master's thesis, go for CAG. You'll get snappy, repeatable answers and lower total token spend after the few initial prompts. If your data is dynamic, your traffic is bursty, or your infra team is a guy and a dog, stick with RAG. The retrieval tax is predictable, your GPUs stay happy, and you can sleep at night without worrying that the stale cache is shipping yesterday's compliance policy. If you do not own the model and use APIs, just enable the CAG Boolean value whenever you know you will be querying the same document over and over. And yes, 
you can obviously combine both. You can build a KV cache containing your frequently asked questions and answers, then wrap a rag layer around it for the fresh long tail, maybe someone just invented a new framework questions. It's more orchestration work, but you get deterministic answers for the important bits and flexibility for everything else. If you want to reproduce our experiment, the collab is linked below. Test it with different questions, tokens, and judge, and let me know your results. And if you want to learn how to build both architectures and more, embedding tricks, index tuning, KV cache gymnastics, complete rag pipeline, the whole circus, our 60 hour course for LLM developers has a seat with your name on it. We go from zero to production with every eval metric and failure mode included. Huge thanks again to Miguel for nudging me down this rabbit hole. Please subscribe to his newsletter, The Neural Maze, if you like this type of content. On my end, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.